Oh, yeah, I'm a Georgetown. I'm born and raised in Georgetown, so I'm a Georgetown. I grew up between Maryland Street and Frog Hole. Now, of course, everybody in Cayman, well, not everybody, but the majority of people in Cayman knows me, see me around all the time, but what they really, really know me as, the infamous buccaneer and pirate. For piracy, folks, um, I have been in Pirates Week basically from almost the beginning of Pirates Week. And over the years, of course, I didn't expect what is happening now, is I've gotten more and more and more involved in it, and it's got to be where I am the face of Pirates Week. And every day people say to me, Darwin, how come you don't have the costume on? You know, folks, after about a week or a couple of days with that costume on, <laughs> you wouldn't want to smell me, let me tell you that. So, of course, I can't be wearing a costume all the time. I don't know what it is, but people just love to have that costume, need to have that costume on. Uh, Pirates Week has grown over the years, folks. Um, I've learned a lot of things from Pirates Week. Also, of the way I conduct myself in public, because, of course, I'm a public face. I got to be a very much of a public face to people. And so I've I learned very much how to conduct myself. But people always ask me after Pirates Week is over and all the party needs to die down, and I take my costume and I say, what are you doing now? What, 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 what do you do? I don't ever see you working. What, what do you do? What, what, what do you do? Well, folks, I am a self-taught professional underwater photographer and videographer. Um, that's what I do for a living, and that's what I've started doing back in the 70s, and I am a professional underwater photographer and videographer. Um, I document everything that happens when I'm diving, and basically it goes on and on and on. As I go up, up back on dry land, I basically document that, and that's what I do, folks. That's um, that of many things that I do. Sometimes I wonder what I do myself, you know, but uh, that is basically my profession and what I do. And again, I document all this. Over the years, folks, I've seen a lot of change in our underwater environment. Um, I photograph a lot of change in our, in, our underwater environment, and a lot of it concerns me because I'm very, very much of a conservationist and ecologist, and it really, really concerns me. But the thing is, folks, we still have a beautiful, beautiful place here, beautiful diving, some of the best in the world, came on back a little, came on especially. We still have a, a beautiful, beautiful place here, folks. And like I said, I document all of this stuff. You know, people have asked me over the years how, um, you know, how much of that has changed. Like I said before, it's changed quite a bit. Um, we have a lot more marine parks, and we should be getting more marine parks, which a lot of people, as a part of, part of a tradition, uh, doesn't really, really want to hear about. But, uh, you know, it's something that is very, very important for, for the future generation, especially for everybody who is uh, a lot, lot younger than I am. Uh, it is very, very important for them to have that as, um, as basically our marine parks, so we can preserve all these things for later date, for, uh, for generations to come. Um, In the early 90s, I was awarded a 5,000 platinum dive card by SSI School of Diving. And me with a handful of people throughout the world received these cards from SSI School of Diving. I, um, in 2007, I was inducted into, into the National School of Diving Hall of Fame. I have done over 37,000 dives. I know some people out here haven't done one. <laughs> so sometimes, folks, I feel more comfortable on the water, and I do on land. And when I when I go diving, folks, it's like I'm coming home. This is my home. And I've done this quite a long time, folks. Um, uh, I also, over the years, uh, in my photography, I've learned very, very, very much about the environment. Of course, you think, as a Caymanian, you think, well, yeah, you know all about the sea and stuff, because I went to sea for five years, I was in the Merchant Marines for five years. But, um, of course, there's a lot of things I did not know when I started on my underwater photography. Um, it's totally different from on, on land, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's basically a lot, lot different. But, uh, folks, as I went on in my journey, in my life, basically, as, as, uh, as in the dive, dive industry, I, I'm also a dive master assistant instructor. Um, Photography, folks, underwater is very, very hard. Uh, it's not as easy as, uh, as uh, of course, you can't use a smartphone and all that sort of stuff. You have to use a, <laughs> you have to use a housing for it. You know, of course, you see all of this, the, 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 smart the smartphones now. Of course, they have uh, extension lens and all that sort of stuff, but try doing that underwater with them, and it's a little bit more difficult. 
I have photographed people from all over the world. I've also gotten people from all over the world who have seen my photographs, some of my photographs, and has complimented me on them over the years. And I have about 30 years of photographs in my library and archives at my gallery. Very, very lucky, knock on wood, that when <laughs> Hurricane Ivan came along, I didn't lose one photo. Wow. And that was a lot of preparing, a lot of sweat. <laughs> Put them in my refrigerator and all that sort of stuff <laughs> is what I do with my photographs, folks. Have. So it, it wasn't it, was, it wasn't very easy at all. Now, uh, underwater photography, like I said, is what is my specialty. I love it. Videography, I love it. Uh, it's my passion. And it, every day I, I, that I photograph underwater, it learns me a lot more about our environment, how important it is, and how much I see this change around Cayman and what is really really, really happening in the it. Now, culture-wise, folks, I am passionate as I am on the water with my photography and my videography. I am as passionate about land culture or heritage here in Cayman. Of course, people say all the time, oh, Darwin, uh, yeah, you know, no more heritage in Cayman. Culture gone, you know, because everybody loves to bring their culture in and all that sort of stuff. But I don't believe that a lot of that because I live my culture. I live my heritage. I live, I, I, I live these things, folks. What you look at here is uh, it's a scene that... This was taken in East End, and over the years, people use the scene. That's in Georgetown. You will see a lot of that, but of course, you don't see as much anymore in Georgetown. Is because of the changes in the environmental laws and all these kind of things. And what happened a lot of time is you would see people seeing goggle eyes. Now, this is what they call seeing goggle eyes, which is a small, like a cousin to the jackfish. And the whole entire community of folks would get involved in. Uh, seeing the goggle eyes as you could see here, and that's what they're doing. This was in East, and I took this like back in the, in the 70s, this photograph. And everybody's seeing the goggle eyes. When you get them, folks, and basically in the school of goggle eyes, they would all see in a school, and it would be like a couple, couple thousands. So when they pull up the scene nets, put them in the boat, take it to shore, clean the goggle eyes, everybody who's helping there would get a share of the goggle eyes. And then what they didn't have to share, they would sell. And that's basically what they did. You don't see it as much anymore, folks, like I said, because the marine laws has changed and because of the boat traffic in Georgetown. Kim and Bracken Little came and you still, you, still, you, still, you, still, you will still see a lot of that because it is no, it's more remote. You don't have as much boat traffic, jet skis, wave runners running up and down, and that changes a lot of things. Um, but you do see that still up in East End, in, um, in North Side, in Bogdan, and different places. Fishing is a very, very big part of our culture and heritage, folks, and of course, I'm sure everybody here has been fishing at one time or another. If you haven't, you wish you could go fishing at least at some time. It's like, I want to go fishing on the weekend because the weather is so good. So I don't have to be buying fish because it's very expensive. And that's still very, very much part of our culture. Um, what has happened because of the marine parks has been widening more and more and more and more, and you got more and more marine parks and more and more marine parks and they're expanding bigger and bigger, a certain species of fish that's being killed and we catch that people don't, uh, that you can't catch anymore. Uh, the pirate fish especially is a big, big top topic and um, that has re is really, 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 really changed. Of course, all the, um, not, not changing a little, uh, too much from that, but uh, the thing is almost all of the fish in Cayman, we had different, we as native Caymanians had different names for. And of course, instead of calling them the pirate fish, a pirate fish we used to call them a squaw, right? Now, of course, you can't get, hardly catch them anymore, or, they, or, or it's basically uh, getting to where it's less and less we can catch them. But again, part of our tradition, part of our culture, folks, is fishing. Yeah. Our Caymanian houses, folks, um, the few houses that we still have, the traditional Caymanian houses that we still have, um, which I'm very, very proud of, and I'm sure all of us Caymanians are proud of them. Uh, you don't see as much of them anymore, they're not being built anymore, and we do have a couple of architects in Cayman who do have, um, who basically um, build some of the Cayman, or some of the houses like the old Caymanian houses. But as you can see, folks, first of all, we had to have a nice porch in the front of the house. All Caymanians had to have porches in front of their house. First of all is, and the cool breeze, a nice northeast Caribbean tree, it means blowing down, you will get nice cool breeze on your porch, you're laying down your hammock, you're chilling out your hammock in a rocking chair or in your swing. And it was really, really nice to see that troll came on, folks. It's to see that you don't see it as much anymore, of course, because uh, you don't see that. But uh, it was very, very nice. Also, we have 
the zinc roof houses. And of course, years ago, you didn't see um, you didn't see uh, you know uh, tile roofs and all this kind of thing that you see now. But basically, every house in Cayman had zinc roof. And the reason why is because before we had public water, we used to use our cisterns. And believe it or not, folks, for years and years and years, we had cistern water that we drank. Now, what we would do is we would have gathered an all around the house on the house top, and once the rains come, because it was very, very, the, the weather patterns has changed throughout the world, folks. It's not, uh, the rainy season was very, very precise in Cayman when I was growing up as a child, and well into my teens and 20s. But it has changed because the weather patterns throughout the world has changed. Um, when the first rains would come, first, of course, when it's very dusty like this, house top, plenty of dust. Nothing but dust inside your house, plenty of dust. All the time, it's dust, dust, dust. So what they would, what, what we commands would do is we would disconnect the gutters, or before we did that, we would let it would rain, then disconnect the gutters, clean our cisterns out, reconnect the gutters again, and then of course when the rain come again, in the cistern and the water was clean. Sometimes people used to boil the water, but it was so clean we used to have the cistern so clean it's the way they didn't have to do that. Of course, you can't do that now with, uh, with tile roofs and all that sort of stuff um, in this kind of discourage of having your own gutters in your house, but people still have that, and I think it's getting more and more to where people are easing up on the law to where we could have gutters still basically in house cisterns. Because, uh, of course, with the Water Authority and the government making money off of that, they have, <laughs> of course, uh, they're going to discourage you. Uh, you want to have no cistern, though, you know, um, you know. And when you look around Georgetown, and what happens also with not having that is, we have a lot of flooding around Georgetown, especially Georgetown area, because of the buildings not having cisterns and all the water of the buildings and all the, all of them have gutters. The water runs off, of course, and guess what happens? Flooded all over the place in Georgetown. Sometimes you see them in the rain three or four days or a couple of hours. That will happen because no cisterns. And it's very, very important folks to have cisterns. Now on North Church Street, folks, we have Mr. Arthur Bodden's house. And every now and again, folks, and I've seen this over the years, is to where drivers will run into the house, or they run into the um, fence, and they will run into sometimes the old printing shop that's there. And as that happens, folks, what happens is they rebuild it over. They repair it over, and they always repair it over. And I've seen this a couple of times over the years, folks, and to me that is never, that's not short of being heroic. Because our old Cayman buildings, to me, is pride and joy. It's part of a culture. It's very, very much part of the heritage and traditions, basically. And the more I see people preserving them, the more we could associate with these things that surround us. Because the less things we see as Caymanians, especially of the native Caymanian people, that we see around us, especially, the tougher it is for you to associate, because people associate with their surroundings, whether it's a rainforest, whether it's a city, you know, and, you know, people associate with that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, Mr. Now, Mr. Arthur's print shop. They run into that sometime last year, and of course they had to go and repair it back over again because they run into it, and this is what they, when they were repairing it, and of course Mr. Arthur's granddaughter is here, folks. Thatching is very, very much a very, very much a big part of Cayman before, not as much anymore, and this is a silver touch. And every now and again, you see some of the guys around Cayman still touching and everything else. And this is what it looks like when those guys are touching with the silver touch, and when they're using it. When people touch their houses, folks, of course, it lasts for a long, long, long time. It doesn't leak. That's Roy up there with his big bare feet up on top of the house, touching the roof. Yeah. You know, Roy, I, I've never seen Roy wear shoes, folks. <laughs> that's that's the small came out. Um, this is what it looks like after they finish thatching the roof, folks. This is what it looks like, uh, thatch roof. And again, we also have a traditional, uh, or beautiful building uh, by by um, by Lobster Park. It came out on Cabo Cove, which I'm, I'm very very much a part of. And this is the first Cabo we've built in about 20 years, folks. And very very important to us. Very interesting, and I love it. And. We are trying to make more of these. We also think about doing a schooner, one of the old schooners. We think about doing that also too, folks. So you get by a chance to go by the Cat Boat Clubhouse anytime, folks, or come by. Feel free to come by, folks, and talk to us and talk about cat boats and 
But it all be where we are. That is very, very important to us. That's a very, very historical site, folks. And this is what the CAD will look as, 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 as it was being finished. The finishing product on the CAD boat. And of course, down at Whitehall Bay, you see the children always down there, serving fries. And that's what they're doing right here, folks. They're serving fries. And it's good to see that because it's a tradition that I've born and raised up seeing. They still fries with the, with the screen wire. And they still use that, folks, to beat up the other fish and catch spots and different things, which is, which is absolutely fantastic. And Hand lines, of course, you know how to see people fish with hand lines on the water, but with reeling rods and reeling rods and reeling rods. You know, traditionally, we fish with hand lines, folks, and that's what's going on right here. Uh, I love to see people fishing with hand lines. I haven't been fishing for the last hundred years. Uh, I just haven't been fishing anymore, but uh, still hand lines, folks. And again, folks, we have our nice, fresh barracuda. And everybody loves, uh, well, of course, not everybody likes bar, but uh, of course, us Caymanians, we love bar. Of course, they're poisonous, but um, you take your chances, you know. <laughs> 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 but a good, a good, a good fried bar, you can't beat it. And then, of course, you got Miss Moshe frying some bar. And I'm sure everybody in here loves fried fish and flitters. So do I. I love fried fish and flitters, folks. And this is Miss Moshe up the Eastern Heritage Day in the caboose or on the caboose frying our fried fish and flitters. So folks, I hope, uh, I hope um, the young people here uh, can con um, continue our traditions, and I'm sure they will, and I see it all the time, like I see the, the young boys there, folks, see, uh, see uh, student fries. So I'm sure, and I hope that you take something uh, a bit of this talk away from, uh, 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 from this uh, presentation, folks. So enjoy, thank you very much, and Pirate Speak 2017.